Hello everybody, just leaving from the parking garage um, after celebrating my daughter's first day of school which got a little bit more exciting than it needed to be Let's put it that way down, restaurants are not what they used to be anymore Well, but I'm not talking about here about my first day, daughter's first day of school um, Talking about that I'm now driving to work and this gives me some time to reflect a little bit on yesterday's games in the Nations League uh, One game of which I already briefly summarized in the post that I had overnight And yeah, this will post now shortly after lunchtime uh, here in Europe uh, It's a little bit out of whack everything. I will have a short video for you in the evening so for tomorrow evening as well. But yeah, so what did I watch yesterday? Actually, less than I thought. But you know, if you have someone wanting to go to school, you gotta prepare and you gotta prepare well. And so, uh, there a lot of time went into that. And yeah, now I'm driving nice scenery. Unfortunately, you don't see as much, but yeah. Okay, let's get to the game. Uh, of course, first I watched uh, Ukraine against Slovakia, which was in front of an empty house, seeming to the racist chance, which I think killed the game almost immediately. Uh, I know the studies have been done that this is really an advantage for the uh, visiting team, since the referee is not as much influenced by the spectators, which is a factor. I was surprised. So the uh, home field advantage is usually down to how hostile the crowd is, uh, more or less. I mean, there are some referees that go against it, but studies have shown that this is a factor. So yeah, Slovakia should have been happy, but from the, I saw most of the second half, a little bit of the first half, from what I could see, I mean, it was kind of a dull game. And just when I thought this is gonna end in a goalless draw, uh, the Ukraine got a penalty. Well deserved penalty, I have to say as well. I think Slovakia had only half chances, but so did Ukraine. As far as I remember, I didn't see anything really exciting. Uh, I think the most exciting the penalty was converted with the uh, Slovakian goalkeeper getting his hand on it, but uh, no chance of saving it. I think the most exciting thing was the Slovakia jersey. Um, which in action, when you look at it from, from this, it didn't look as great as if you look at it up close. This zigzaggy pattern on the sleeves that uh, it has, that is kind of dense above and then peters out uh, towards the bottom. It really looks from a distance that there's this big patch of blue here and then the sleeves are almost the same color as the uh, rest of the jersey. I also was a little bit disappointed that uh, Slovakia played in their um, home jerseys so it was yellow against white which is not exactly a color combination that I like I think if Slovakia would have played in their navy shirts this might have looked much better personal opinion uh, when I looked at those shirts I really like the navy shirts a lot but yeah the zigzaggy pattern so it looks up close I really love it uh, from a distance unfortunately not so much and the other thing of course, is that when you look at the pattern, it almost is epilepsy inducing because there's this weird when they move in the camera, uh, there is a weird movement to it on the screen, so that also didn't work out too well in a way. So I was a little bit disappointed with almost everything Slovakia related in that game. Um, yeah, then um, I did not watch Denmark Wales. I won it, but I didn't get to it. Denmark won to nothing. They finally have a team, but yeah, the, it, they just accepted the old terms for until October. Now they have to make negotiations to go further. Yeah, well, it's gonna be interesting uh, how it's gonna work out. Uh, as far as I understand, it's about image rights and uh, sponsors. Yeah, I guess it's the modern times. Um, it seems to me that the Danish Federation doesn't want to give up money when the when the, the players are featured or something like, like that uh, because they only have that little income as a co compared to the players and the players of course yeah this is my right so I guess it's I can understand both sides without really knowing too much details from the little rumors that I heard that's what I got so uh, I'm not gonna say much more to that uh, I had to adjust the camera slightly 
Okay. So uh, Denmark won to nothing to Ericsson goals. The first one I think it was really nice uh, played, and then uh, I think the second one was a penalty. He could have had three, but I think this would have been too much. Uh, Wales was got into the game, but seemingly they left it all on the pitch at home when they played Ireland. So yeah. So now it could be an interesting group if now Ireland beats Denmark, then everyone has the three points, but maybe Denmark is the strongest team in this group. It remains to be seen. Denmark still has to go to Wales, and so yeah, not everything's lost. That's the interesting part about groups of three that uh, it can change like, just like that. Um, and then the big game, of course, was France against the Netherlands. Um, I actually spent one other reason why I didn't see, um, watch the Wales game, Denmark Wales game is because I was watching the Reds, NFL Red Zone channel at least the first half. But I then decided no, you gotta watch France against the Netherlands, although uh, France against Germany didn't convince me. Well, it was better, they played in front of a home crowd and you could see that France really wanted to take it uh, seriously and played reasonably well for most of the time. It was not a, a super great game, but I think it was a decent game. I was also relieved to see that the Dutch play with white pants, although this could be just down to the opponent, but actually that looked okay, but the light orange shoulders just seemed off to me, and then, yeah, the black, the font was alright, was not the one that I was hoping for. Um, yeah, we have black accents on show. This kind of a, it looks a little bit like the 98 uh, jersey that they had where they also had black on the main jersey but then the pants were white. So I guess I'm I'm overall okay with the look but the, the light orange just looked off and it also looked off uh, the Dutch team. <laughs> they don't look good. With the first shot on goal they got the equalizer. I mean uh, and the first goal was such a glaring uh, defensive mistake. I mean, he heads back right into the path of Matuidi, who is offside. And Matuidi just puts it in the box and Mbappé scores the goal. Uh, about Mbappé, I have to say, I'm a little bit split on him. Uh, on the one side, he is this really sympathetic, nice young star that does nice things like um, having um, you know, donating his entire prize money from the World Cup for charity and all that kind of stuff. But then he also starts flip-flopping around, was already at the World Cup like that. Uh, and the one PSG game that I saw was the one against Nîmes, where a, such a stupid red card he got. I mean, he got far, he gets up and uh, emotions get the better of him and he just pushes. Uh, uh, his opponent down. I mean, that's a clear red, red card in three games. And also, uh, I saw it against Germany and now it's where there's a little bit of acting in there. There's a little bit of demon, I call it. Uh, that doesn't make him all that sympathetic in a way. I really, <laughs> you know, it, he's young, a little bit unexperienced. He, I think he most of the time he does the right things, but I think he's acting on the pitch. Sometimes he's a little bit too influenced by a certain Brazilian with number 10 that I don't, 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 don't want to name. Not more, almost did name him. But yeah, so that's uh, just a thought on him. And I give him the benefit of the doubt, but I am curious to watch it. Um, it reminds me like a weaker version of a young Cristiano Ronaldo. That's all I'm gonna say about it. You know. Yeah, as I said, uh, Game France had it in the bag most of the time and then in the second half they kind of let it... Just when you thought that the game is falling asleep a little bit, a comment that you mentioned, yeah, maybe the French are tired of each other, want to play at home. Suddenly the Dutch had two chances, Wijnaldum uh, shot wide and then the next one, uh, Wijnaldum in and I think Babel scored the goal. 1-1 one, one, and probably you, had, you thought that the game could flip around. I mean, this was really the first shot and goal where they got the equalizer. Uh, but France then took it seriously. And you could see it within 15 minutes, Giroud scored a really nice uh, equalizing goal. Uh, and I think now he overtook Zidane even. So yeah, France got a deserved victory. Um, I said a lot about the, the shirt, by the way, the French shirt again in all blue. Yes, they became world champs in it. I'm ready in there, Nike, France, whatever.
this time I even get it. I mean, uh, the orange socks, it makes more sense here than in the Germany game still. <sighs> no, all blue frost doesn't look right. Just does not look right. And then other games that were in the evening, um, there was um, the big, you know, Lake C. I watched a little bit. There was um, the, no. <sighs> the names give it in Slovenia against Cyprus, where Slovenia got a lead uh, early in the second half. Cyprus got the equalizer and an own goal by Slovenia sealed the deal. I think Cyprus was the more active team overall, so I think the victory was well deserved. Uh, but you know, they had to make hard work and it was a terrible home goal. I mean, it was a cross in from a free kick and he heads it into the box. So yeah, this definitely didn't look right to me. Uh, and then the other game in that group was the big game and I on purpose kept it now for last. I had it in mind I wanted to remember the Cyprus-Slovenia game. Uh, that was of course Bulgaria at home, at home against Norway. Um, I probably missed it. I actually would probably would have liked to watch that one, but I somehow missed it. I didn't see the uh, start of starting time. I think it was probably uh, at the six o'clock slot. Could have been. Who knows? Um, anyway, I would like to see the whole game because from the highlights, it was in the first half. But the highlights I saw were three Norwegian chances. Then a fourth Norwegian chance uh, after the half, and then Bulgaria scores the winning goal. Uh, very happy about that. Uh, as you know, my wife's from, from Bulgaria, I have family there, so you know, uh, my kids are double. One of them is even a triple citizen, the older one that started school today. So, yeah, um, I'm of course happy for Bulgaria, and I learned this when I watched Bulgaria play Italy. Uh, that was kind of a media test because Italy is my team. But being in Bulgaria, watching that game, I was all in Bulgaria's uh, side. Um, and that tells me, yeah, we have the family teams, which is of course uh, Austria and Bulgaria. And to a certain degree Peru, because my sister-in-law is there, from there. So those are those three teams. And then, and then when I say my favorite teams are Italy and the Netherlands, it's because the other three rarely qualify. So, you know, I, look, I usually look for those this time around Peru qualified and all the others didn't. So, that's very close. But yeah, uh, Bulgaria, it was a beautifully played goal. Uh, nice uh, passing move and headed in. And I have to say the Bulgaria jerseys uh, have kind of an old school look to them, but I like the color uh, and the overall kind of serene look to it. And of course the nice lion crest. Uh, tonight you will see my my first Bulgaria jersey and it has this stupid, stupid federation crest. I really don't like that one. Really, really don't like that one. Because of the, you know, whenever a federation logo needs to have the original 1970 Telstra style soccer ball, the ball, the white one with the black panels that everyone sees as the soccer ball, although it was only used for one World Cup for real and maybe a second one in Germany in 1974, but that was kind of where Color TV came in and everyone uh, said, yeah, this is the soccer ball. <sighs> maybe somehow get it, but yeah, whenever your Federation logo needs to rely on that heavily, um, you gotta have a, you have a problem. And that's exactly what this logo has. Um, and now they at least wear a lion on the chest. I really wish to have one of these, even the previous one. I think I even like the previous one better by Homa. Uh, although it had this weird gradient. I have to see if I can get one of these. Yeah, well that was that. I didn't see any highlights of League C games uh, and I didn't see even any NFL highlights yet. I saw that Pittsburgh and Cleveland made a draw. So Cleveland <laughs> uh, starts out the season by not losing, which is already an improvement for them. So yeah, I don't know how much into NFL you are. I'm actually big time. It might be that uh, most of my Sundays uh, up until Fe February I will actually spend watching more NFL than soccer unless Milan is uh, playing or oh, there's really a big soccer game. But yeah, those are the times that I loved in America a lot where you can watch soccer and NFL all day long. I loved it. And now I'm getting a little bit of that again, although I have kids now. Well, I'm almost at work. 
still about two or three minutes to go. Uh, maybe comment. I'm wearing not a national jersey I wear. Uh, my favorite is the Milan away jersey um, because my older daughter who's in school wanted me to wear it because I told her I bought this one when she was a month old. So this is one of my two um, Milan jerseys. I bought another one with it that reminded me of her and she was so happy about it. She said, Papa, please wear this for my first day of school. I was completely uh, like a sore thumb <laughs> among the other parents, but I like it this way. I want to have my. Own. I don't have any clothing sense or fashion sense, but I have a fashion style: soccer jerseys, hockey jerseys, sometimes some NFL uh, football jerseys. But I don't have too many of these. Well, I know it's a little bit late uh, to get this, but you know, I hope you guys had the chance to watch. Ah, there's one last thing I wanted to mention. Um, that I keep mentioning that display, you know, the little bar that shows the scores for the Nations League with the diamonds and the circle in there, I find highly confusing. I know they want to put the short colors of the teams that are playing up there, but it's highly confusing. I mean, if a team plays, say, in red shirts and white pants, you have the upper diamond red, lower white, and then the circle in there reverses it. What the? I don't get it. Uh, and I think with this, you actually would have a chance to use uh, the socks also. Make the upper diamond for the shirt, the circle for the pants, and the lower for the socks. I think this could make a lot of sense. And also that they're not always color matching. I saw when Bulgaria played in Slovenia, they uh, were playing in red with green pants and they had it in red and white. Yeah. Well, anyway, now I'm at work. Um, Please let me know which games you were watching. Uh, if you agree with my assessment of these games, what do you think about the Nations League? Um, this is a spot for me, I don't know. Uh, this Nations League bar. And yeah, general thoughts. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And as I said, there will be a short video in the evening. I will talk to you soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.